Hi everyone, it's Lauren and welcome to another episode of my page to screen series. In this series I take a classic book and look at all the different TV and film adaptations of it and compare them. I've done quite a few of these videos now so if you're new to them and you enjoy the format there is a playlist of them in the description bar below. The previous episode that I did was on Far From The Madding Crowd by Thomas Hardy and the next one that's coming soon, a few weeks after this video, is going to be on Emma by Jane Austen. But today's episode is going to be on Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. Now, going into this, I thought there were going to be so many adaptations of Great Expectations, but I could only find and was able to watch six um, versions, and I really thought there was going to be more than that. If there are any versions that I've missed, I would love to hear from you in the comments um, if I've not included your favourites. There will be spoilers for Great Expectations throughout this video, so just to give you a quick recap of the plot, Great Expectations follows a boy called Pip who lives with his sister and her husband Joe, who is a blacksmith, and then one day on Christmas Day he finds a convict called Magwitch in a church yard who um, scares him and asks for a file. He goes and steals a file, brings him some food, um, in the end Magwitch is recaptured and we never see him again. At some point later Pip um, discovers that he has a mysterious benefactor who is going to give him money. He is taken from the blacksmiths into London where he is to be brought up a gentleman of great expectations. So we start with the classic David Lean film from 1946 starring John Mills as Pip. I really enjoyed this film and in the course of doing this page to screen project, I've noticed that I tend to really enjoy um, the films from the 30s and 40s in general. I think I just really like how they approach adapting literature and I enjoy what they do cinematically. They tend to be very faithful to the story and um, this version really was. But they also, because it's shot in black and white, tend to have a lot of um, dramatic use of scenery. Something else I really enjoyed in this film as well was John Mills's performance. I think he does a really good job at being unassuming Pip when he's at the blacksmiths and as a kind of country bumpkin and then changing into a cocky gentleman later on when he comes to London but still retaining some sympathy and overall I think he handles that balance really well. Um, his friend Herbert is played by Alec Guinness and Alec Guinness is an absolutely wonderful Herbert. He's so foppish and very friendly and just lovely and posh um, but it's, it's a really nice dynamic between the two of them and some of their discussions are genuinely very funny. I think the only problem I had with this film was that the end was quite long, and the end is quite long in the book to be fair, they spend a lot of time rowing up and down the river devising ways of um, getting Magwitch out of the country, um, and that does take a long time when you're reading it, but they take a long time over it in this film and it, it does tend to drag I think at the end. But overall, um, really impressed with it, and I think it has stood the test of time as an adaptation. I would still recommend watching this now if you're a fan of Great Expectations. I unfortunately can't say the same thing for the second version that I watched, which is a film from 1974 starring Michael York as Pip. Um, I honestly don't have anything to say about this film because it was just fine. It was just fine. Michael York was fine. I found it quite boring. I just don't have anything to talk about. I have nothing to say. It was just dull. I hate to develop any kind of prejudices towards certain eras of filmmaking, but I do find that a lot of adaptations from the 70s and 80s tend to be in a really difficult place where they're trying to be um, naturalistic. It's kind of the transitionary period from the dramatic 30s and 40s into what we would now consider a decent adaptation of a book and it, they get stuck in the middle somewhere where they're trying to be faithful but then it just comes across as boring because there's not enough creativity in this. We then move on a number of years to our next adaptation which is in 1996 and is a modern day retelling of Great Expectations which stars Gwyneth Paltrow as Estella and Robert De Niro as Magwitch. Now this film is okay. As a film it's okay. As an adaptation of Great Expectations, I think it's really good and it's a really interesting way that they've adapted it. It's set in the US and Pip is a little boy called Finn and Joe is a fisherman and they, I think they're in Florida and they're just generally very poor. Miss Havisham is this elderly eccentric lady living nearby and she's kind of dressed like she's still in the 60s, like it's really quite interesting. And instead of it being a situation where Finn is taken to become a gentleman, he's a little boy who really enjoys art and what happens is, many years later, some mysterious person organises an art show for him in 
in New York. So he has to move to New York and he's given this amazing loft to live in and he's commissioned to do all these paintings. And one of the things he does is paint Estella quite obsessively. But it really works in this modern day setting, especially when Joe comes to New York and he's wearing this like awful 70s like frilly suit and it's just, and he's just not fitting in and all the art people, all the arty people are really judging him. And th that just really works, bringing that interaction into the modern day setting. Robert De Niro is really good as Magwitch. I think he's got a different name um, in this film. And when he comes to meet Finn, he's just really happy that he's successful. Um, and he's just said, oh yeah, I found your notebook, which had all these drawings in. And I just knew I wanted you to be an artist. And it's actually quite sad because um, he's being chased by these people. He ends up getting um, stabbed. And it's just a really touching moment between him and Finn, just him going through this notebook that Finn had dropped as a child, him saying, look at this, it's so beautiful, I'm just so happy. I also really loved Gwyneth Paltrow as Estella, she's incredibly cold and aloof, and it's really interesting because sex and relationships in a modern day setting is very different than it would have been in the Victorian ages, so she can tease Finn in different ways than Estella teases Pip um, in the book. And I particularly enjoyed the end where Finn comes back to the house um, and, and finds Estella there because some of the adaptations really make a meal out of Pip and Estella coming back together. Um, in the John Mills version, he finds Estella there and he rips down all the curtains and he's like, the light Estella, come to the light, love me. And they hold hands and run out the door together and it's all wonderful. But in the book, their meeting is a lot more enigmatic and Dickens kind of leaves it open. You don't, you know that they are together now. You know that Estella is single and they could get together romantically, but it's not clear that they're definitely going to. And this film works really well in that they just kind of hold hands and then, and then it ends and it leaves it open. It leaves that ending hanging and you wonder what happens next. And I think it deals with it probably the best out of all of these adaptations. We then fast forward to 1999 to a TV adaptation starring Ewan Griffith as Pip. This is the first adaptation to really play around with Dickens and kind of change what happens. Um, and some of that I think really works. For example, the, the scene when Pip comes back to Miss Havisham's and Estella's like, I'm going to marry Bentley Drummond, soz love they have a really good face-off and there's the conversation that you want them to have um, and that works really nicely. However, there are some other instances where conversations are modernised and I just think, oh no, this doesn't work. Another thing that irritated me in this film is that a lot of close-ups were used but a lot of the time you've got kind of people's faces like this and I, I get, I, I think I get that they're trying to be uber naturalistic or give you a real sense of um, claustrophobia? I don't know. I, I can try and work out what they were doing with these shots, but ultimately I just think it was just really close and it was all the time. So two more adaptations to go and both of them are from 2012. The first one is a TV series um, starring Douglas Booth as Pip. I did watch this when it was originally on the telly, um, but I watched it again for this this project now being able to compare it with lots of other versions of Great Expectations. And I do remember at the time when I watched it thinking, I don't remember this from the book and thinking it was just me remembering it wrong. And now I can say, no, there's lots of things that happen in this version that are not in the book. Of the two TV adaptations of Great Expectations, I find them quite interesting because most versions cut out Orlick and they cut out that entire storyline. Orlick is someone who used to work for Joe at the Forge and he ends up attacking Pip at some point and he's, he's somehow important in the plot, but really you don't need him. You don't need that whole um, subplot storyline. But both of the TV adaptations do have Orlick in there. However, they use him in a, in a quite a different way. So in the 1999 version, he does still feel quite superfluous. Um, however, in this version, because it elaborates on quite a lot of things, the fact that Orlick is there as a character doesn't feel out of place. As you would expect, if an adaptation is going to be a little bit out there and a little bit different, there's going to be some changes that you like and some changes that you don't like. What I did admire about this film was that although it does make a lot of changes, it did still feel like Great Expectations. And I'm not really sure how it did it because it changed a lot of characters and it changed a lot of characters' motivations. But at the same time, it made some things which are implicit in the book or some things that Pip is just thinking in his head and made them very explicit. So it still kept um, 
Dickens' general intention, I think. Another alternative approach is Miss Havisham. She's a lot younger than a lot of other Miss Havishams, um, and I remember at the time with this adaptation coming out, the director saying, you know, Miss Havisham wouldn't be that old, really. It's not been that long since she was supposed to be married. She's not gonna be in her 80s. Like, she's probably, like, in her 40s, and that's fine. Um, but Gillian Anderson plays her with a very ethereal, somnambulistic quality. She's got a very high, soft voice and um, it's perhaps implied that she's lost her mind a little bit, which I just didn't really feel fitted with everything else. Like when her relations come to see her, she gets very angry and upset and she feels very vulnerable that her relations are there rather than being angry and taunting them. And when her dress catches a light, um, it's shown that it, that's a very deliberate act and she deliberately burns letters, she puts herself there and has decided to commit suicide. That's the implication in this film. So that's fine, Like I, I'm happy with different adaptations of characters. The Miss Havisham one I feel is a little bit too different to the point where I feel like it misses the point of, of what Miss Havisham is doing. Overall I think this is a very beautiful production, it's shot very beautifully, um, it's very slow, it's three hours long so you get a lot in there, a lot of stuff that isn't in Dickens and if you don't care about that then that's absolutely fine and I think this is a really good adaptation to watch to give you a flavour of Great Expectations. However, just a lot of stuff is different. So if you're studying Great Expectations at school or something, I certainly wouldn't recommend this adaptation because it just it just takes it and, and, and plays around with it. But it's actually a very enjoyable production. All the, of the performances are very, very good. And the final adaptation I watched, which I have to say I think is my favourite, is a film from 2012 starring Helena Bonham Carter as Miss Havisham and Ray Fiennes as Abel Magwitch. Now, I was very nervous about this adaptation. I was worried it was gonna turn into the Helena Bonham Carter show, but I think this really mixes a modern take on an old classic with really consolidating the story, but making it still very obviously Dickens, very obviously Great Expectations. And I think the thing that really works in this adaptation is that all of the performances are absolutely superb and just spot on. I honestly can't fault anyone. I think maybe the reason that I love this adaptation is because actually when I think about it, Great Expectations isn't really like my favourite book and there's a lot in there that I think is quite superfluous. So this film does a fantastic job of streamlining the plot and keeping some of the humour but just really staying true to the heart of the story. I think this is one of the best examples of Helena Bonham Carter's very good acting that I've ever seen. I was worried she'd be quite caricatured and she completely isn't. She handles Miss Havisham with a lot of care and a lot of grace but also has a hint of humour in there. Like there's a scene where she's parading um, Pip in front of her relation. She's like, oh, you've got a good benefactor, have you, Pip? How wonderful. Isn't that wonderful news, everyone? Okay, you may go. And it's just a line like that, which obviously is not in Dickens, but it exemplifies really well that Miss Havisham is claiming to be Pip's benefactor, and she's just showing him off in front of her relations in order to provoke them. And it's just a very simple line in a very simple scene, but it does the job absolutely wonderfully. Jason Fleming as Joe Gargery is my absolute favourite Joe. I love him and I think Joe is such an important part of Great Expectations because he really is the heart and the conscience of Pip and he really mixes the sort of humour without looking too stupid. I think a lot of earlier Joes look a bit dull and a little bit henpecked when compared to the Mrs. Gargery's and a lot of Mrs. Gargery's are just completely ridiculous and over the top. But in this version, Joe is just like really laid back and just really loving to Pip. And especially at the end when he comes and looks after Pip when he's ill and pays off all his debts, I just think it's just so wonderfully done. But every performance is good in this film, even down to Jaggers and Wemmick, I think were wonderful. They were just so well realised, especially with this being a film and it not having as much time as a TV series. Like you really have to get across people's personalities um, without giving them loads and loads of screen time. And I think they did that incredibly well. The one thing that I think lets this film down is the Finches of the Grove Club, which Pip and Herbert and Bentley Drummle are all a part of, is quite ridiculous. It, that is anachronistic 
and it annoys me because nothing else in this film really feels that bad. But their clothes and their hair is just ridiculous. Bentley Drummel honestly looks like adamant and it would be okay if the rest of the film was like that but the rest of the film isn't. It just feels like they have ridiculous clothes and are wearing all these crazy colours and this stupid hair. Um, and that just ruins it very slightly because but to be honest, I thought this film would have more slip ups than that. And I think really, if you're going to watch one adaptation of Great Expectations, I would either say watch the David Lean 1946 version or watch this one. It gives the best all round summary of the plot while being really enjoyable to watch and also keeping a lot of the humour in there. So I hope that was interesting. Like I said, my next page to screen episode is going to be on Emma in about six weeks time. I have all of my page to screens planned for the rest of the year. I think after Emma is Brighthead Revisited and then in December it's going to be Jamaica Inn. If there's any other books that you would really like me to do a page to screen on, please let me know in the comments below. If you're new, you can subscribe for more videos by clicking the little red button just underneath the left hand corner of this video and I will see you next time. Bye. And what I found impressive as well is that there are a lot of characters in here but you do feel like you know each of them very well and each of them are related in different ways so there might be one.